Hello ladies and welcome back to the drive school. Today we are going to look at how to do load sharing on hybrid DC bus. Hybrid DC bus is something we find on modern ships, on battery ships, and the real single line diagrams can be quite complex. So to simplify a little bit, to get a quick overview, we have made this simplified single line diagram. However, it contains all the elements you find on a hybrid ship today. Here we have a DC bus and the voltage is selected to be nominal 700 volts. It could be something else, but this is a nice round figure and actually seen on some of these ships. Feeding into this DC bus, you have energy sources from uh, energy storage, a battery. There is diesel generator, probably variable speed and frequency. You have a shore connection, like a charger. Then you have the consumers, which can be heavy consumers like propulsion systems. It could also be consumers like a grid for the hotel system. All these elements need to balance the energy. And of course, you could do this in a power management system. You can control it with a PLC. However, the speed you need to control it then might be a challenge because you have to do it then within 10 milliseconds. When you have a power demand here, then these one have to feed in the energy very fast. So if you also have like the speed handle here from the battery, it doesn't work fast enough in the PLC world. So let the drive do it. Let the drive do what it is best at, and that is managing a DC bus. All of these applications have inbuilt control of the DC voltage. And it's just to put the settings and parameters so that it's synchronized and it will basically work on its own. And it's extremely fast. Then we are talking down to microseconds, 50 microseconds, 100 microseconds. So a peak load and any surge will be handled extremely fast. When we are planning the load share on this DC bus, the consumers are pretty easy. They will be happy with any voltage between 600 volt and 800 volt they get. However, the energy sources into the system need to be some kind of synchronized to be load shared. The traditional active front then usually works around a nominal voltage and have a load drooping on the voltage. It's seen like here. Selected 700 volt, it will droop off 3% of its voltage as a function of the nominal current. Then you can do exactly the same on the shaft generator. The shaft generator will then act very similar to the active front end. And when we pull energy out of the system, the voltage will droop synchronized to the active front end. What about the regenerative energy then? The regenerative energy will then lead to energy into the diesel generator. Probably there is a shaft generator with a propeller that can absorb this energy. Otherwise, the diesel engine will uh, be pushed, which they don't like. Then the DC-DC converter. Usually it's run in a base current reference mode so that there is a power management controlling the battery. However, we want very fast response into the DC bus, so we let the DC DC converter be controlled by the over voltage controller and the under voltage controller. This works like this. The active front end and the generator application is working around its nominal voltage 700. Let's say this one is overloaded or turned off, overloaded or turned off. Okay, then it comes down to the battery. You need more power, for example, for the propulsion unit. The voltage on the bus will drop. It will go down to the DC-DC converter under voltage control level. Here the battery will start feeding into the system. And with a 3% drooping you can do it with many DC converters. In the other direction, let's say you are feeding more energy into the DC bus than your consumers can absorb. Then the voltage will increase until 720 volt, which is my over voltage controller level also with a 3% droop, so that I can do with many parallel DC-DC converter. In this way I actually can just push energy into the system and I will charge my battery. 
Then you have the last mode, which is the pure battery mode. If you turn off the DC converter, the freewheeling diode will leak through the freewheeling diode and into the DC bus. So if no other energy sources are available, the voltage will be kept up to the battery voltage. The maximum voltage will be the battery state of charge 100%, 610 in this case, and 540 for an empty battery. One of the advantages with this is that you have almost no losses when you are running without modulation. So this can be used in a way for a long range, very economical propulsion unit. You will see it in some of the clean, pure battery modes that they run with a closed DC converter in some cases. Battery bank, 300 kilowatt hours. Thank you for watching.